You've probably heard the phrase, statistically, you're more likely to die in a car accident than in a plane crash, whispered between nervous flyers at the gate before a flight. And while that is true, some airports have reputations that worsen those odds a lot. And that airport is the Tenzing Hillary Airport, also called the Lukla Airport or Mount Everest Airport in Nepal. But before we get into it, make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and share this with someone who you think is crazy enough to climb Mount Everest or travel to this dangerous airport. Due to this airport's high altitude position, conditions there are quite turbulent. In fact, about 50% of all scheduled flights in the afternoon are canceled because of poor visibility as well. Most international runways are more than eight to 10,000 feet long, but Lukla's is just over 1,700 feet. The high altitude of 9,334 feet creates thinner air and makes it harder for aircraft to generate enough thrust for a go around, but reduces resistance, meaning the planes don't slow down as quickly, which makes landing very risky. The only help your aircraft will get is the 12% incline of the runway to assist the aircraft in slowing down faster. Over 50 people have died by takeoffs, landings, or approaching the airport due to its predominantly poor weather and insufficient navigation systems. This airport's accident riddle history began 11 years after it was constructed on October 15, 1973. A Royal Nepal Airlines DHC-6 Twin Otter 300 had a crash landing and could not be repaired. While none of the three crew and passengers were hurt, this was the beginning of a tumultuous history of deadly incidents at Lukla. In October of 2004, a Yeti Airlines aircraft crashed while attempting to land and caused the death of three passengers. The plane collided into a mountain near the Lamjura Pass due to poor visibility at an altitude of 11,600 feet. One of the deadliest crashes there was in 2008, when a Haviland Canada DHC-6 Twin Otter 300 arrived in Nepal from Kathmandu. As it approached, poor visibility and lack of radar signaling caused the aircraft to crash into the rocks near the runway and it caught on fire. Of the 19 passengers and crew on board, only the captain survived. Another deadly incident occurred only a few years later in 2010. A 228-101 passenger plane again departed from Kathmandu bound for Lukla. During the flight, the weather worsened quickly and visibility dropped significantly. This is not an uncommon occurrence, and like I said before, half of the flights in the afternoon into Lukla are canceled because of poor visibility. There were indications of a generator malfunction, but the captain didn't state any state of emergency over the radio or to ATC. He tried to switch to a backup generator, but was unsuccessful. The pilot decided to return to Kathmandu, but in the return approach, crashed into a hillside. All 14 passengers were killed. Due to the difficulty of flying in and out of Lukla Airport, the Civilian Aviation Authority of Nepal only allows experienced pilots who completed at least 100 short takeoffs and landing flights, have over one year of short takeoff and landing experience in Nepal, and have completed 10 takeoff and landings at Lukla alongside a certified instructor pilot to actually fly there. On April 14, 2019, an aircraft specifically designed for high altitude, short runway takeoffs and landings, veered off the runway while attempting takeoff and crashed into a parked helicopter. The first officer of that plane died, as well as two police officers who had been standing near the helicopter. Four other people were reported injured, but did not die. It was later reported that the co-pilot who was flying had not had more than a year and a half of flying experience and was far too inexperienced to be flying out of such a challenging airport. Nepal in general has a poor reputation for air safety, and there are several contributing factors to that. One is the geographical challenges and intense, quickly changing weather. The home of Everest is understandably an extreme landscape, and that's just an unavoidable fact. The second is air traffic control and infrastructure are much less developed in some of the more rural areas in Nepal, but still deal with heavy traffic due to the growing tourism in the area. An estimated 600 people summited Everest just last year, and that's only the people that made it. That doesn't include the ones going to the base camp or just for the views. And most of them pass through these smaller, less developed airports. While there are challenges associated with flying into Nepal, it's important to emphasize that many flights operate safely to and from the country on a daily basis. Passengers can contribute to their safety by choosing reputable airlines, staying informed about weather conditions, and being flexible with travel plans, especially in mountainous regions where weather conditions can change on the fly. Always adhere to the guidance of the airline and aviation authorities for a safe and enjoyable journey if you go to a place like this. But this still remains the most dangerous airport, so if you're flying in and out of there, be very careful and make sure you do your research. And if you feel uncomfortable, don't fly. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more aviation content. I'll see you next time.